One of the most common radial flow turbo machines is a centrifugal pump. So we've seen with those a lot. Um, the main components of a centrifugal pump is its impeller. So that's the thing on the inside that rotates around. It has blades or vanes attached to it to spin the fluid. Um, attached to the rotating shaft, so the power goes in to the shaft, spins this thing around, spins the fluid around, um, sucks in fluid through what's called the eye, and then expels it radially, um, increasing both its velocity and uh, pressure. Uh, the other part of my um, centrifugal pump is a stationary casing or housing, or also called a volute. Um, so that's the stationary part of it that goes around it to keep all the fluid in before it gets shot out radially. So here we see a diagram of a centrifugal pump. Um, on the right hand side, see kind of the side view, a shaft turning around with kind of propellers on it, uh, the eye um, on the left hand side with inflow, so propellers sucking the fluid into that, and then being ejected radially, so in that sense up and down on the right hand side. Um, top view of it, on the left, again the fluid will be coming kind of straight down into the page in this case, the shaft and impeller rotating around and then the fluid gets ejected through that discharge tube. So these pumps can be either single stage or multi-stage. Uh, so single stage is obviously just a single pump, single impeller system. Multi-stage you have uh, multiple impellers on the same shaft. So as it comes through, it goes through one impeller and the discharge from that enters the next impeller, discharge from that enters the next impeller. And so you have this multi-stage pump system, discharge from one end to the next. Um, the flow rates will be the same through all my um, all the impellers. Again, conservation mass can't go anywhere else. Um, but each time I go through these impellers, I get a new pressure rise, and so I end up with a or could have a very large pressure rise over the entire multi-stage pump through all these uh, different impellers. So if you're looking for a really large pressure difference or head, um, a multi-stage pump um, can give you that. So a basic theory for centrifugal pumps, um, when I talk about velocities, this is what we're going to be looking at, velocity coming in, velocity going out, uh, we'll be dealing with the average one-dimensional velocity as it goes through the centrifugal pump. Um, so at the inlet, we have the absolute fluid velocity, so capital V, absolute fluid velocity, is equal to the velocity of the blades um, plus the relative fluid motion with respect to that blade, so same definitions of U, V, and W that we um, had in the last lesson. So inlet V1 equals U1 plus W1 is a vector. At the outlet V2 is U2 plus W2 again as vectors. And then my blade velocities U1 and U2 are just the radial coordinate of that blade um, times the angular velocity of the impeller. So U1 is R1 omega, U2 is R2 times omega. So here's a figure uh, representing the velocity triangles for the centrifugal pump. So this thing will be spinning around, um, has some darkened blades inside of it, inner radius R1, outer radius R2. Velocity triangle at the inlet, position 1, has some relative velocity W1 relative to the um, fan blade, so coming in exactly tangent to that fan blade, and then has some uh, fan blade motion, normal to the um, radial coordinate, so tangent to that inner circle, U1, then my absolute fluid velocity, V1, coming in, have some angles, alpha 1 and beta 1, representing um, those directions, and similarly on the way out, have a velocity triangle, so W2, again, coming out exactly parallel with the blade, U2 representing the blade motion, and V2 being the vector addition of U2 and W2, the absolute fluid velocity coming out. In the previous lesson, we did conservation of angular momentum um, through any turbo machine, so that's still going to apply here. Um, had this equation that the torque on the shaft is negative m1 dot r1 v theta1 plus m2 dot r2 v theta2, and then assuming I have a constant mass flow rate, which I obviously need to have, uh, for conservation of mass, I can just call m dot rho times q, so that's m1 and m2. Um, so pull that out, I have my shaft torque is rho times q, r2 v theta 2 minus r1 v theta 1, just rearranging slightly. And then to find the shaft power, 
um, shaft power is just the torque times the angular um, velocity. So shaft torque times omega. So multiply this guy by omega. My shaft power is rho q omega r2 b theta 2 minus r1 b theta 1. And then using the fact that uh, r2 omega is u2 and r1 omega is u1, uh, shaft, shaft power, density times flow rate, rho times q, u2 v theta 2 minus u1 v theta 1. You can also find the shaft work per unit mass. So that's simply taking the shaft power, w dot, and dividing it by the mass flow rate, m dot. So that gives me the work, shaft work, simply u2 v theta 2 minus u1 v theta 1. So that's my work per unit mass. And similar to what was done um, previously for pipe flow, we can use the full Bernoulli or conservation of energy equation uh, here. So in this case, my shaft work is my second state, P2 over rho plus P2 squared over 2 plus GZ2 uh, minus my first state, P1 over rho plus V1 squared over 2 plus GZ1 plus my losses. So essentially, this guy on the left plus work coming in equals this guy plus my losses. So just rearrange slightly. And then what I want to do is combine these two, so basically set them both equal to each other. So setting those equal and technically dividing by g, I get u2 v theta 2 minus u1 v theta 1 over g is h2 minus h1 plus little hl. Uh, here h represents my total head, so basically the whole left side of Bernoulli's equation, p over rho g plus v squared over 2g plus z, so that's for 1 and 2 respectively and HL is my head loss in terms of the previous equation. That's just my losses divided by G. So looking at that equation, you can see that the energy um, added to the fluid by the pump is given by this term, U2 V theta 2 minus U1 V theta 1 divided by G. So that's my energy being put into the system. Uh, actual head rise, um, so amount of pressure or height or velocity that this pump's actually adding, um, HA, is just those two terms, h2 minus h1. So again, that's where your velocity and um, pressure or height is in there. That's going to be equal to the energy added by the pump, u2 v theta 2 minus u1 v theta 1 over g, uh, minus any losses to so any energy being taken out of the system. In the ideal case, I have an ideal head rise um, where there are zero losses. So zero losses just means hl is zero. So my ideal head rise is just um, equal to the energy being put in. Um, so Hi is U2 V theta 2 minus U1 V theta 1 divided by G. So an alternative equation for the ideal head rise, um, we can find that by doing a similar thing to what we did last lecture. So converting these combinations of U times V into combinations that look like this. So my ideal head rise is 1 over 2G, V2 squared minus V1 squared, so essentially kinetic energy gained by the fluid plus u2 squared minus u1 squared, uh, kinetic energy gained by from the fan blades, then minus w2 squared minus w1 squared. So that's again stuff that's going on inside the pump itself in terms of the relative fluid motion. So those are the basic equations we can use to analyze centrifugal pumps. Um, the problem, well there's actually two problems with these. Uh, the first one is that a lot of these terms are kind of hard to define. Uh, my angles, for example, between U, V, and W, I have some um, exit angle, some entrance angle, and I'm assuming those are parallel to the fan blade, which may or may not be true. Um, so I've also made a lot of assumptions. That's the second problem to kind of over, which a lot of times oversimplify what's actually going on inside the centrifugal pump. So a better way to actually analyze these guys is to use what are called pump performance curves. So these are determined experimentally uh, from the pump itself. and um, so that sort of data is something we'll be seeing next class. So um, no examples for today, because um, again, better way to do it is the way we're going to see next class.